definitely there's a correlation between um, stereotypes and the way people see us in reality. <laughs> Our culture has to have myths or beliefs, cultural beliefs, that support the status quo, that explain why things should be the way they are. Tomas Tequila, already muy loaded. Uh, currently, there's, there's four uh, basic uh, staple stereotypes of Latinos. Um, you know, first is uh, the narcotraficante, uh, the drug dealer. Uh, second is the gang banger, the, the gang uh, member. Third would be the illegal alien. Last would be, for women, would be prostitutes or meseras. Mexicans as, as violent, uh, lazy. In, in a real sense, the Alamo and the Mexican-American War uh, founded, created the stereotypes about Latinos, primarily Mexicans, and they haven't changed much since then. Some of the current problems as far as stereotypes of Asian, Asian Americans in the media is that there isn't a lot of balance um, as far as portrayal. So there's this kind of hyper eroticized kind of fantasy, you know, about the, the geisha girl, subservient, submissive, will come home and give you the back rubs, you know, and all that good stuff. And then the flip side of that is you have women who are the dragon ladies. For men, um, right now, what we're seeing a lot of um, is Asians portrayed as either villains, they're gangsters. You won't get away with this. Yes, I will. I will capture these criminals and make them face the American justice system. Or they're martial artists. Or what is equally troublesome is that they tend to be um, the emasculated, asexual, kind of nerdy wimps. She's no good for you, big guy. You have more important things to care about. And so either time, you know, you have problems in terms of nothing in between. Of African American women, there's currently probably the most popular stereotype is the welfare mother. Um, that African American women uh, just take advantage of the system, that they're fat, big, have lots of kids, lots of sex without protection. Well, I think there are pervasive stereotypes about African Americans still not being intellectually able or not uh, having a good work ethic that have an impact on things like welfare policy. Uh, there's, there's an idea about welfare that it just caters to blacks that don't want to work for a living. And so the response to that is a kind of a punitive one to try to get people off welfare as quickly as possible. How the image of blacks, and in particular black men, changed before slavery, I mean while slavery was happening and then after slavery. Whereas part of the image before slavery, or during slavery I mean, is that black people are happy and they're just always happy and singing and enjoying life, which legitimized, again, it serves as a, as a legitimizing myth or reinforcing these myths that blacks are just happy in slavery and that slavery is not um, an upsetting thing for them. They're, they're fine with slavery. Whereas after slavery, they became seen, especially black men, as violent and scary. I like to report shoot. And I think a lot of it is related to legitimizing myths. I'll give you 50 cents, you give me 50 cents change. <laughs> no way. Yes, way. Drink, 85 cents. You pay, a go. What's a fi? I don't understand a fi. There's a V in the word. It's five. Uh, they don't got Vs in China. Not Chinese. I'm Korean. Uh, whatever. You come to my country, you take my money, you don't even have the grace to learn how to speak my language. You go now. No trouble. <laughs> I stay. What 
do you think of that? God, where you go? Now, um, there are organizations like the Media Action um, Network for Asian Americans, MANA, and they're a watchdog group that's trying to sort of ensure more fair, balanced, and accurate portrayals of Asian and Asian Americans in the media, whether it's film, whether it's television, or radio. People in this country typically do not think critically, so when people see images of Amada, people that are considered the other, who are darker, who have different language, different customs, you know, and so forth, then they tend to place them in another category. Most uh, European Americans continue, I feel personally, continue to view Mexicans um, based on what they see in film, based on what they see on television. And so if the, the stereotypes are, are there on television and film, and that is the only source for, for many European Americans to find out about Mexicans and Latinos, that's how they view us. African Americans, in turn, have, have, been, have done extraordinarily well. Uh, currently, something like 14% of the roles in television and films are, are played by African American performers. Latinos, who are the largest minority in the United States today, who make up 14% at least, if you count undocumented people, make up barely 3% of the roles on television and film. The stereotypes of African Americans, I think, have changed over time. They're less overtly racist today, whereas in the past there would be like the one scene from Ethnic Notions where the um, black maid is singing while she's uh, putting up the, the, the slave master's um, clothes and just like that's perfectly appropriate. There wouldn't be things like that today. It's a tragedy, it's virtually impossible for an American to see on television, to read books, to see films about the Middle East that are not colored politically. There is a r handy set of images and cliches, not just from the newspapers and the television, but from movies. Many films end up with huge numbers of bodies, Muslim bodies, strewn all over the place. So the, so the idea of Islam is something that, to be stamped out. The so-called independent media in a liberal society like this in effect are so lazy and are controlled by interests that are commercial and political at the same time that there, there is no investigative reporting. It's just basically repeating the line of the government. If you want to change a system, you have to work the system. And the way to work the system is to give money to movies which properly portray you. Uh, you've got to think of, of going to a movie as not an entertainment choice, but as a political statement. And if you then choose to avoid those movements which you don't think portray you well and, and put the box office numbers up on those movies which do portray you well, it will make more of those movies. It's basically public opinion and uh, public consumption will really dictate what the studios end up offering. So we need to clamor and we need to be vocal about what we want and just put the pressure on the studios and be more vocal in our demands and I think that uh, we'll see greater representation. As North America becomes more ethnically diverse, what changes is that likely to have on the kind of stereotypes the media present? Well, I would think we'd get a wider variety of stereotypes uh, than we've had in the past because there are more different kinds of people that viewers are going to recognize. The Mexican Latino community has to begin investing in films, in making films. I think African Americans have done uh, an incredible job doing that. Basketball players, baseball players, investing in film, investing, you know, and making stories about themselves. Certainly it is the path of least resistance to go along with the stereotypes, to perpetuate stereotypes, to, you know, use it as a cognitive benefit when we meet a new person to put them in this category, meet another person, put them in that category. That's the easiest thing to do. That the people who are less prejudiced, who believe that prejudice is wrong, are motivated to control their prejudices. So even though the ideas come to their head, they don't act upon them. It's not just an individual change, like I have the power to control my stereotypes. It's also a societal change. We have to change the actual circumstances of groups so that we can't, we don't have any basis for stereotypes. <laughs>
You forgot your flute? Don't you want him? No, I don't want him. You can have it. Gracias, Senor Gato, gracias. Thank you.